Hello, everyone. A really pervasive trend that you see across all kinds of uh, weapons in TF2 and a design decision that I think really, really benefits the game is the fact that a, a ton of the weapons in the game are high damage and slow firing. And this was deliberate, right? It's the reason why, you know, the, the beta version of Scout's Nail Gun got replaced with the Scatter Gun. It's the reason why Medic got the Crusader's Crossbow. Uh, it's the reason, maybe even the reason why Pyra got Dragon's Fury, I suppose. Um, but there's, there's a few reasons why I really like weapons like this. Because for starters, just dealing damage is more rewarding as a result. You either hit or miss, so the hits just feel better, rather than, you know, something like an SMG where you hit some shots and miss some, and, you know, it just kind of feels less rewarding, and it feels less like you're missing and more like the weapon. Um, it's easier... Well, it, it lends itself towards improving with the weapon as well, because you really notice when you miss. But also, and I think most importantly, is... It makes it so that there's actual solid defensive counterplay just through movement, right? Because if you can avoid a shot, that means that 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 player can't output any damage towards you until they can fire their next shot, which again, pretty slow firing weapons for the most part. So there's a ton of really big positives that uh, a design decision like that, design archetype like that, uh, carries with it, which is why I think it, it really benefits the game. However, there is a concept that it introduces with some unintended side effects, I'll say. And that concept is damage thresholds. So for the most part, damage thresholds, I think, are a... I'll say they're a good thing. They're definitely balanced. As a scout, you can... At, from full HP, take a rocket from a soldier, right, without dying, but you can't take two. Uh, and you usually can't take three, assuming it's close range, like 100 damage rockets. So you're kind of um, in this in this area where you, you understand how much damage you can take before dying. And I like that a lot because it, it allows you to take fights differently. You know, it's it's a lot easier to run at a demo if you're 101 HP than if you're 99 because you know his pipe would do 100 and you know if you're over that damage threshold then you can survive that damage. So it uh, it, it does allow for some player expression in how you take fights and you know it really rewards you for uh, understanding your own HP and the amount of damage that a player can deal and it just introduces a, a level of skill and depth to the game that I think is uh, really good. But one of the unintended consequences of this damage threshold system is that in some cases, damage bonuses and damage penalties either don't really matter at all or matter a lot. Now, when I say don't matter at all, obviously it's not like it, it's not there at all. And, you know, not everything is cleanly within damage threshold. Sometimes a player is already weak. Uh, sometimes you kind of hit the shot, but not really. And you get some splash damage or only a few of your pellets hit. And um, as a result, any damage modifier whatsoever is going to have some... Um, you'll notice some cases where it matters. Uh, but whether it's really, really impactful to the game kind of depends on whether you're consistently crossing these damage thresholds or not. Now, let's offer some examples. I think the poster child of damage thresholds is the Liberty Launcher. Because the Liberty Launcher is a weapon that has so many really, really good stats. Um, so, obviously, Soldier is heavily reliant on rockets. Soldier is extremely limited by a low clip size. And Soldier is really dependent on using rockets to be mobile. And 
the Liberty Launcher kind of solves all these problems, right? It gives you an extra rocket, which is a massive, massive bonus to have. That means that uh, like a, a typical Soldier High Bomb usually uses two rockets. And there are a ton of bombs that soldiers just won't go for because it would only leave them with one rocket left over, right? Like a three rocket bomb to get somewhere really fast and, and do a really aggressive bomb. But you only have one rocket. And again, with damage thresholds in mind, one rocket is not enough to kill pretty much anyone who isn't already weak. So most of the time, soldiers just aren't able to do that. And the extra rocket suddenly opens the doors for so many different options. On top of the fact, an extra projectile speed bonus means that rockets are just easier to hit from every range that's fantastic like everyone would uh absolutely love to have something like that just easier rockets to hit why not plus you take less damage from rocket jumps which i mean the gunboats already forego a lot of firepower for a um a rocket jump damage um resistance and even further, like, that's really nice to have, absolutely. And maybe even lets you survive in situations you wouldn't otherwise, because sometimes a soldier is literally too weak to rocket jump, even with the gunboats, and they just kind of have to waddle away, hoping they don't just get chip shot down from, like, a scout peeking doorway or something. So all of these things are really, really beneficial to how someone would play soldier in a competitive setting, or just in general. So why is the Liberty Launcher awful <laughs> as a weapon, right? Um, and... Literally, the only downside it has is a minus 25 damage penalty. So it's like, okay, well, all these great downsides, how much could a damage penalty really matter? And in the case of the Liberty Launcher, it's a lot because it really throws off those damage thresholds. Soldier is extremely reliant on damage thresholds for all the reasons I've already talked about with, uh, you know, regard to clip size. A lot of the time, soldiers are bombing in for a pick or a f uber force or any number of those things and they don't have the luxury of being able to fire another rocket uh even if they had it loaded they just don't have the time so with that in mind when you're falling out of certain damage thresholds when you no longer can reliably kill a medic in two rockets and now it takes three when you can no longer reliably two rocket a scout and now it takes three when you might even need four rockets to kill a player because they have somewhat of a buff it is awful right like all the bonuses suddenly just don't really matter anymore because for your meaningful interactions when you need to kill someone before you die um you just take way too long to do so because you just take way too many shots to do so and again slow firing weapon uh all because you're you're falling out of these meaningful damage thresholds right so if a 25 damage penalty can absolutely gut an otherwise fantastic weapon let's talk the case of a different um weapon with a damage bonus of 25 Again, a uh, soldier rocket launcher because soldiers, again, are very, very dependent on damage thresholds for how they play the game and how they interact with um, all the other classes. Let's talk about the direct hit. Why is the direct hit not something that uh, really gets used despite having, you know, a 25 damage bonus, which we already saw a 25 damage penalty can absolutely uh, ruin a weapon and make it just not worth using despite, you know, being fantastic in all other aspects. Um, so let's talk about it. Well, for starters, the, uh, the direct hit does have a really big downside of decreased splash radius, which to be clear, matters a whole lot. It, it kind of guts the weapon's consistency because not only is splash damage a really reliable source of closing out kills and just getting damage on players in general, uh, but... Splash damage is also uh, what soldiers rely on to get spam damage, and soldier spam is incredibly important for holding space, holding doorways, um, and kind of just preventing your team from being walked all over. Like, spam is, is really important. And not being able to do that so reliably does miss out on a pretty important part of your role on the team, right? So for that reason, it's just not very consistent and people are already going to not want to use that so much because obviously 
it's like people prefer playing with consistent options. You don't want to just have like a roll of the dice whether your weapon is gonna help you or be worthless, right? So, so we can't understate how big of a downside that is in the consistency of the weapon and just the the team play aspect. But the direct hit has some really really big upsides. For starters, I mean the. Uh, just the, the completely stupid mini crit on rocket jumping or explosive jumping players makes it a fantastic uh, denial tool because you can just kind of delete players who are like pretty mid-range trying to bomb or something. Um, and sometimes you just get really stupid kills as well. Like, you know, a medic is across the map and just happens to get knocked like two inches off the ground by a sticky and suddenly your rocket is now doing 150 damage mini crit and the medic insta dies. So it does have some stupid stuff like that. Um, but on top of that, it has a really, really fast projectile, which again, makes it way easier to connect those rockets, which is absolutely fantastic. Um, so why, why is it not good why would that 25 damage bonus not throw it over the edge right well again it comes back to the damage thresholds and the direct hit while it does cross some meaningful thresholds um the big one of course being the fact that you can one shot scouts in close range if they're not buffed um that's kind of just the biggest one and that's that's about it right and soldier to be clear doesn't really struggle against scouts in super close range because you can just rely on splash damage um so the fact that in other cases like you're not killing medics in more or in any fewer rockets uh most of the time there are going to be some um i guess like mid-range kind of long end of mid-range where you know a direct rocket might be doing um 60 damage and instead it's doing like closer to 80 and then that can two rocket the med um but for most of the meaningful interactions you have in game you're not getting tossed or you're not get you're not crossing any any damage thresholds and as a result it functions very similarly to stock in that aspect where you're still taking the same amount of rockets to kill someone um but it's just less consistent rockets because you just don't have the the benefit of that splash damage so yeah, for that reason, it kind of falls short in, in that regard. Now, of course, like people love using the direct hit because it's very fun, of course. But uh, when you're playing to win and you're also, you know, interested in your role as a soldier on the team in general, which does include things like holding doors with spam, then it really starts to seem like a, a much worse option than stock. So we can see that uh, even though the number on the Liberty Launcher and Direct Hit are the same with regards to the damage, right? It's still just minus 25 damage and plus 25 damage. In the case of the Liberty Launcher, it absolutely guts the weapon and just that that damage decrease is enough to completely ruin it um, and make it way worse than, uh, than the stock option. But in the case of the Direct Hit, that damage bonus does not carry it and does not actually help that meaningfully at least it's always nice to have of course um but you're not really noticing it as much you see a bigger number of course but you're still for most of your interactions taking the same amount of rockets to kill players which at that point it's like why does this bonus even matter at all right does it really matter if you're hitting a scout for a hundred damage and then another 80 damage to kill them rather than just 80 damage and 60 damage to kill them not really what matters is the number of rockets it takes to fire which is uh the important thing to to stress here so oh i think that steam message probably got uh picked up <laughs> so now you all think you got messaged on steam that is funny uh but anyway Damage thresholds are a really important concept and kind of explain why in some cases damage bonuses or penalties really matter and in other cases why they might not. It's all about, you know, how regularly or consistently you cross those damage thresholds. Um, and this comes up all over, like, for example, the pain train in some cases, um, like, of course, you're gonna, you're gonna 
take more damage from from uh, bullets and in some cases you will die when you would have otherwise survived but it's not really throwing uh, it's not it's not assisting in scouts crossing any damage thresholds for the most part. You're you're still likely going to die in the same amount of scattergun shots. Uh, of course, it matters more so on soldier because you're just taking more scattergun and just bullet damage in general than a demo might. But uh, it's not as meaningful. Um, you're not going to get one shot by scouts versus something like the candy cane, another melee that has a. Um, damage vulnerability associated with it candy cane's awful for scout because uh you know as much as scout being able to pick up you know health packs on the flank or something when they kill someone would be fantastic for them they'd love that um the candy cane is, is horrendous because suddenly you just die in one pipe in some cases you just die in one rocket when you're not buffed because you're regularly crossing that damage threshold this weapon is you know almost unusable in a serious setting um, so yeah, you, you can see it all over. Um, similar weapons, similar weapon archetypes, um, are in some cases absolutely killed by a, a damage penalty or damage modifier, I'll say. Uh, and in other cases, it's not really that impactful at all. And again, it just comes back to those damage thresholds. So hopefully that was, uh, an interesting topic. Um, doesn't really get talked about much, but uh, it is really important to understand for uh, for how you you play the game and take fights and, and whatnot. You know those those thresholds of damage that you are above and what you can and can't survive uh, helps you play the game, uh, figure things out, and yeah, it uh, it's just cool to think about as well. So anyway, hope you guys enjoyed. And I will see you guys next time.